Hello and welcome. Today we're doing things a little bit differently. This is our review video. Um, it's going to go over the checklist that I assigned um, for class tonight. And the students are to do problems 1 through 19. And then they're asking you to go through and check over their work. So you'll notice that a 1 is right here. So that's problem number 1. What does a whole one whole fraction look like? If your child knows that, check it off the list. Look at problem number four. What is a fraction? If they got that, check it off the list. So you can just kind of see what areas they're strong in, what areas they're weak in as we get ready for our test tomorrow. So I'll kind of go through and give an example of each one of the boxes as well, just so that if you want to uh, see how I've taught it in class or just as a refresher for you um, or students, you, those of you following along, I can be your parent right now. So here we go. What does one whole look like? Uh, we talked in class how, you know, 6 over 6, anything over itself, 303 over 303 is one whole. Okay, so anything over itself is a whole. We talked about what is a fraction. A fraction is a part over a whole. All right, the part is the numerator, the whole is our denominator. We also talked about how it is a division problem. So if I have one half, that's the same thing as one divided by two. It's a division problem. Equivalent fractions. So talking equivalent fractions here, let's just start with a, an easy one. We have three, six, then we want to change that into a twelfths. Well, what do I do? I went times two. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So uh, this would be three times two is six twelfths. Three six, six twelfths, equivalent. They all simplify to one half, which leads us to our next one simplifying into lowest terms. So if I have the fraction, let's say, 8 twelfths, and I want to simplify that, I notice they're both even, all right? I could divide them both by 2, and I know there's a better way, and I'll show you that in just a minute, um, but I can divide them both by 2. So 8 divided by 2 gives me 4, 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. Now, I'm not quite done yet because they're still both even. They're still both divisible by 2. So if I divide by 2 again, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 8 twelfths would simplify to 2 thirds. Now, if you were on it right away, you would have noticed that you could have divided by 4 in one step. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 2 thirds. Um, you could have done it in one step instead of doing it in 2 like I did, but either way, works for me. As we keep going down the list, write a mixed fraction as an M proper fraction. And I actually need to edit this a bit here. It should be right the mixed fraction as an improper fraction. So when I start here, I've got 9 fourths. And um, I want to change 9 fourths to be a improper fraction. So it already is improper. I think I have these switched around. Write the improper fraction as a mixed number. Oh, I do. I have them switched around, so this should be 18 and this should be 17. But either way, let's start with it. This also should be the word the. Kind of goofed up there, but that's all right. Nine fourths. So, nine fourths. How many fourths can I pull out of there? Well, I can pull out two sets of four fourths because four fourths is one whole, eight fourths is two whole, so one whole, two whole. But there'll still be one, because I only took eight other. Nine minus eight gives me one fourth. So two and one fourth. I hope I didn't get uh, anyone confused on that right there, but uh, we'll kind of go through that again. So next one, write the improper fraction as a mixed number or mixed fraction. So it's going to be the other way around again, two and one third will be my number, and I want to write this as an improper fraction. If I work my way around, 2 times 3 is 6, so 6 and then plus 1 is 7 thirds. Work your way around the clock. Or, what you can think about is you have two whole here, all right? So that means 3 thirds and 3 thirds. So if I add those together, I currently have 6 thirds. 6 thirds is my two whole plus my one-third that I have left over here gives me six-thirds plus one-thirds, seven-thirds. You can either work your way around the clock by multiplying denominator times your whole number, 
and then adding your numerator, or you can work it out. Either way works for me. Next, to compare using less than, greater than, or equal to. So, we'll just take a quick one here, two-thirds. We're going to compare that with five-six. Now we have a little problem <coughs> in that they both do not have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and change this one to a six. Times two will give me a six, so four-six. Hey, four-six is less than five-six, so two-thirds is less than five-six. And the last one on this sheet right here is, make a little room, order the fractions from least to greatest. Let's just give an example here of, of one and one third, six sevenths, and seven sixths. Now when I look at this first off, I'm going least to greatest. And I see that one of these numbers is less than a whole, and that's six sevenths. So I'll start there. Then, Get rid of that one. I see that I have two numbers that would be one whole. So this would be one and one sixth. I want to convert that so that they're both uh, mixed numbers here. So I'll get that out of there like that. So one and one third and one and one sixth. I know that one sixth is smaller than one third because if I cut it into six pieces, it's smaller pieces. So one and one sixth. And then one and one third would be the greatest. So there they are in order from least to greatest. Next, change the fraction to a decimal and the decimal to a fraction. So let's start with the fraction 5 tenths. 5 tenths is super easy because it already ends in a tenths. And if you know place value, you know that the 5 goes into the tenths place. So 0 0.5. We also talked about how fractions are division problems. So when they don't have a tenths nice and easy or a hundredths nice and easy, you can always divide them. So, we'll divide it out. Ooh, but 10 can't go into 5. So we changed our 5 to 5.0. So it really has the same value. We just changed how it looked. Make sure our decimal goes straight up. How many times can 10 go into 5, 50? 10 goes into 50 five times, and it works out evenly. So 0.5. You can either use your place value knowledge, or you can use your division knowledge. Either way, you're going to get there. Um, the next one here we'll talk will be, let's do 27, 0 0.27. I know that my 7 is in the hundredths place. So if I want to write that as a fraction, that would be 27 hundredths, because the 27 hundredths is my place value. Pretty simple with those. Uh, I'll, sometimes you can simplify that. In this case, you can't simplify 27 hundredths, so it is what it is. Next, add and subtract fractions with the same denominators, numbers 9 through 12. So I'll just add a couple ones here quick, 2 and 1 third, and we'll go plus 4 and 1 third. Denominators are the same, makes it super easy. Denominators together are thirds, so 2 thirds, and then 2 plus 4 is 6 and 2 thirds. Very, very easy when the denominators are the same. I love when the denominators are the same. Now let's do a subtraction problem where the denominators are not the same. Let's go ahead and do 6 and 3 eighths minus 2 and 2 fourths. Ooh, denominator is not the same. Let's go ahead and get them the same. Let's change this into eighths timesing by 2, so this is 4 eighths. But this gave us a new problem because I can't do 3 eighths minus 4 eighths. I'm going to have to go next door and borrow. When I borrow, I'll cross out my 6 and it becomes a 5. What I'm going to take away is 8 eighths, or 1. I'm taking away 1. We talked about that on the first one. So plus 8 eighths. So 3 eighths plus 8 gives me 11 eighths. So 5 and 11 eighths. 5 and 11 eighths is the same thing as 6 and 3 eighths. We just changed how it's formatted so we can subtract it. So 11 eighths minus 4 eighths gives me 7 eighths. 5 minus 2 gives me 3. 3 and 7 eighths. It's already in simplest form, so I am finished. Parents, if you'd be so kind as to just sign this saying that you went through this checklist with your child looking at their problems, seeing how they did, um, that's going to be great for me. We're going to review to start class, and then we're going to take a test uh, that will probably take us two days. So 
um, you can kind of ask and keep track how they're doing, but it's nice to see you uh, taking an interest in their work and going through the checklist with them. I know I appreciate it. They may not say it, but they do too. Thank you and have a great, great night.